how big of a deal is it if you have a missing tooth? And what happens if you don't do anything to replace it? If you ever had a tooth extracted or you're scheduled to get a tooth extracted, you could have one of two emotions. You could be devastated. Oh no, my tooth is gonna be gone! Or you could just not care. Oh, you gotta take that tooth out? No big deal, I got like 30 other teeth to worry about. Whether you're worried about losing your tooth or you simply don't care, I still want you to know what could happen if you don't do anything to replace that missing tooth. Now I will also go over ways to actually replace that missing tooth and I'll talk about that at the end of this video. Video. but whenever you get a tooth extracted you always have the option to leave it alone and not replace it now quick side note I'm not talking about your wisdom teeth I want to make sure that everyone's clear on that but one thing that tends to happen when you take a tooth out is bone loss that means that your jawbone that used to hold that tooth in will literally start to deteriorate because there's no stimulus that you get from that root normally when your teeth are in your bone you're getting that constant stimulus of chewing and using those teeth which will reinforce your jawbone remineralization. But without a tooth there, it's not getting any of that stimulus. So you're gonna to start to lose some of that bone. And we really notice these changes in someone that loses all their teeth and ends up in complete dentures because a lot of their bone has been deteriorated and they get kind of the sunken face look. Now you might not get that look with just one missing tooth, but over time, this can make it a lot harder to fix if you lose too much bone. Now, another change you might notice is your opposing tooth might start to move. This is something called hyper eruption. So if your teeth normally come together like this, but then you lose one of your teeth, your tooth that would normally come together and hit that tooth will start to look for that tooth somewhere. It won't just stay in place. And eventually it can hyper erupt and grow in and try to fill that missing space. Now I see this a lot of times where someone loses a tooth years ago and then years go by and they wanna fix it. So let's say they lose their bottom tooth and their top tooth is still there. And then over time they say, hey, I actually wanna replace that missing tooth. But by the time they've come to me, that top tooth has completely grown in and filled that missing space. So it makes it a lot harder to come up with a plan to fix that. Now, if you're already missing a tooth on top and then you lose your tooth on bottom, since there's no opposing teeth, it's really not that big of a deal because you're not worried about one tooth hyper erupting into the other space. But something else that can happen is your neighboring teeth can move. So if you take one tooth out and you have a tooth in front of it and a tooth behind it, those teeth that are in front of and behind that missing tooth can start to drift in and close into that missing space. Your teeth just don't like to stay put. They will constantly move over time. Now this drifting doesn't happen to everyone, but you don't wanna find out when it's too late and you want to replace this missing tooth. As these teeth will start to drift in, you have more risk for pocketing around those gums. You can get a more misaligned bite. And this means that you'll put these other teeth at risk of being lost in the future as well. So instead of just losing that one tooth, in the future you might be looking at a couple other teeth that you're losing. Now if this is your most back tooth in your mouth, then it's really not that big of a deal because the tooth in front of it usually will not drift backwards. But if it's a tooth in the middle with the tooth behind it and a tooth in front of it there, that's when you can start to get issues. Now the other problem with leaving a tooth alone is you have more of a food trap on the other surrounding teeth. Meaning there's more areas where food can build up and debris and bacteria can also build up. And this may not seem like a big deal, but it puts you at a higher risk for getting gum disease in those areas. And again, if you already lost a tooth there and those other teeth start to drift, you're already gonna have a harder time keeping them clean because now they're at a weird angle. But now you combine that with the fact that there's more food particles building up and more bacteria building up, it can lead to more problems in those other teeth. The other problem with not replacing a tooth is now you start to rely on all your other teeth. This can one, make it a lot harder to chew properly because if you're used to chewing on one side, but now your tooth is missing, it's gonna take a little learning. But now you put your other teeth at risk because you're gonna use them more. And now you put your other teeth at a higher risk of cracking. So obviously I would recommend you replace a missing tooth. Now obviously you can still have the choice to leave it alone, but I just wanna make sure you at least know the risks of what could happen if you don't replace it. Now in terms of replacing a missing tooth, the best option is gonna be a dental implant. A dental implant is basically a titanium screw that goes into the bone. And this titanium screw will basically mimic your tooth's root and then a crown is attached on top of that. Now there are a couple more steps involved with it, but that's essentially how a dental implant works. The other cool thing about a dental implant is it will actually preserve the bone in your jaw because that screw will mechanically integrate 
with that bone. So if you're debating on what the best option is for you, if you want to replace your missing tooth, the dental implant is by far the best. Now there are some people that should not be getting dental implants or should at least avoid getting a surgery for a while. So make sure you talk to your dentist and they'll go over what the best option is for you. The second option to replace a missing tooth is a dental bridge. Now this is the only other option other than a dental implant that is actually fixed to your mouth, meaning it's not something that is removable. Now a bridge can only be done if you have a tooth in front of that missing space and also a tooth behind that missing space. If you're trying to replace your most back tooth, you cannot do a bridge. The way a bridge is done is you're basically putting a crown on the tooth in front of that missing space and also crowning the tooth behind that missing space and replacing that middle tooth with another crown. And all three of these crowns are connected. A crown is basically this ceramic structure that will go 360 degrees around your tooth. Now in order to do a crown, you have to remove some of your tooth structure. The problem with the bridge is if you have two healthy teeth surrounding that missing space, now you have to remove unnecessary tooth structure just to put those crowns on it so you can make that bridge. Another problem is it's a lot harder to clean. So when you replace a missing tooth with an implant, it's its own individual tooth. So you can floss in between those teeth like normal. But with the bridge, you kind of have to thread that floss underneath that bridge because since it's all connected, you can't floss up and down like normal. Some people also try to use a water flosser and that's really helpful with the bridge as well. Actually, another side note, anyone with the implant, I recommend you use a water flosser as well because it'll help preserve the length of that implant. Now, the last problem with the bridge is it relies on two other teeth. So if one of those teeth go bad, like let's say like the front tooth in that bridge gets a cavity underneath that crown, or let's say the tooth in the back part of that bridge gets an infection. Now you have to replace the entire bridge to fix that problem. Because if you have two teeth holding up that bridge, you can't just fix one tooth with a new crown. You have to really replace all three teeth. In general, an implant will usually be more expensive than a bridge, but most people will usually opt for an implant over the bridge because an implant also has a higher long-term success rate and also a lot of the other things I mentioned with the bridge tend to turn people off. Because if you think about it, if you have a bridge and then years go by and now you have to get a new bridge, now your cost actually ended up being more expensive than originally doing an implant. Now let's say it's your most back tooth and you don't really feel like replacing it. I would suggest at least keeping one first molar on both the right and the left side. So your molars are your back teeth, those bigger teeth that are meant for heavier workloads. So when you're chewing, a lot of that work should be done by your molars. But if you lose all of your molars, the next best tooth for chewing things is your premolars. Your premolars are basically half the size of your molar. And they're not meant to be as much of a workhorse. So one, you're gonna have a harder time eating the same foods and it's gonna take a lot of adjusting. But also, you risk putting those other teeth under a lot of stress that they're not meant to undergo and you could crack and lose even more teeth. So if you're trying to decide and trying to put the money together, if it's worth saving one of your teeth, if you're gonna lose all the molars on one side, I would definitely suggest trying to replace those teeth. But if you're gonna end up losing your second molars or the teeth that go right in front of the wisdom teeth and are in between your first molars and your third molars, but your first molars are gonna be okay, those teeth that are right next to those premolars, then you can probably be okay and chew normally. The last way to replace a missing tooth is with a partial. Now, I almost never recommend this for replacing one tooth unless it's more of a temporary fix because people normally hate a partial, especially for just one tooth. A partial or a partial denture is basically an acrylic piece with a fake tooth attached to it that you can take in and out to replace that missing tooth. So a lot of times this is done if you have multiple missing teeth on the left and right side and you wanna replace them all. And it's also the cheapest way to replace a missing tooth. But the problems with the partial is it's harder to chew with because it's not really stuck in your jaw like a bridge or an implant is. And also it's not gonna be as aesthetic. Most people when they end up getting a partial to replace just one tooth, they end up tossing it to the side and never even wear it. And it ends up being a waste of money, even though it was cheaper than a bridge or an implant. So that's all I have for you guys. I hope you liked that video. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. What if I told you that some of the things that you were doing every day could be damaging your gums? In this video, I'm gonna go over nine hidden causes of gum recession and damaged gums. So make sure you stick around for all of them because unfortunately gum recession is irreversible unless you get some sort of surgery, but even that can be unpredictable. So gum recession